mother recently. He said, we spend the first 12 months of the children's lives teaching them to walk and talk, and the next 12 telling them to sit down and shut up. <laughs> well, I can tell you that uh, the Lord just has uh, blessed every person in here, like I was saying in the prayer before, with a, a mother that had an influence on your life to look to Jesus. Amen. And um, throughout my life, I had a, a wonderful Christian mother that raised me in the feet of the Lord and taught me early to read scripture uh, and uh, just uh, talk to the Lord as he's, he's my friend and my father. And I've done that throughout my life. And so I bless that woman this morning who's not here. She's playing hooky. Um, she went to visit her brother down in Pennsylvania. But, um, you know, in, in how my mom raised me, I prayed from a young boy. I said, Lord, give me a woman to be my wife that has the character traits. Now, my mom's not perfect. <laughs> but has the godly character traits that I saw in my mother. And um, the Lord blessed me with my wife that has been a tremendous partner for me um, and has raised our children to reflect Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I blessed my, my wife this morning. Nadia, would you come? Praise God. I bless you, honey. You've done a great job with our kids. invite this morning all the mothers to come up. We would like to just recognize you. Can I ask all the mothers to stand and come up? We just want to recognize you. Come on. Even if it's your first time being a mom, come on up. If you're expecting, come on up. We're just going to bless them. And pray over them. Come on. Come on, Lily. I think you're wrong. <laughs> I just want to pray over them. Praise. I got one. Speaking to us this morning would really just hit the uh, the anointing 
Amen? Praise God. Praise God. I too have the pleasure of having my mom here. Mama, where are you? Where's mom? If, for all of you that don't know, that's my mommy over there. And it's to her testimony and her asking only one thing of me is to bring her to church that I am here this morning. And Amen. so I am eternally grateful to her. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Okay, if I said to you that I was not nervous, I would be lying, and lying is not good, so I'm a little nervous. You know, when I told my kids that I was nervous about preaching, they were like, Mom, why? You're always preaching to us. <laughs> so, I'm going to be bringing a word to you today from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. It's a popular portion of scripture. Um... And it talks about two women, but this message is not just for women, it's not just for moms, although I do want to honor all the mothers today. Uh, it's for all of us. It's for all of us. So I just pray that um, Jesus tugs at our heart this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, as we open up your word, we pray that you speak to our hearts, that you open up our hearts. You know exactly where we're at in life. You know exactly who we are and how we spend our day. And you love us in spite of it. <laughs> and so we thank you this morning that we're in your house and we have the privilege and the freedom to open up your word. And we just pray, Lord, speak to our hearts. Amen. God, give me freedom in the spirit. Make me sensitive to the moving of your spirit and what you want to say to us this morning. Let your anointing rest on your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The, the title for this message is The Better Part. And in Luke chapter 10, in verse 38, it says this. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. So she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But Jesus answers and says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. When I read this portion of scripture, I don't know about you, but to tell you the truth, I relate more to Martha. Amen. I'm a doer. I see things that need to get done, and I want to get it done. And sometimes I'm a little impatient with people who just are not like that. Mm. But with that being said, we are all created differently. We all have different giftings. Mm. We all have different talents. Right. But we've been created by a God that loves us. Mm. And he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead because um, I believe that this is the word of the Lord this morning. And Jeremy, when he was ending um, worship, he said specifically what I'm going to be speaking on this morning about Jesus, we want to sit at your feet. Yeah. Jesus, we want to see your beauty. And I believe that that was confirmation to my heart of the word that the Lord is speaking to us this morning. Yeah. Amen. So, inside of me, there's a hunger for more intimacy with the Lord. Any of you yeah. think that? Yeah. But there's always other things to get in the way. There's always other things to do, right? There's always one more thing. There's responsibilities. There's distractions that may lead us to wrong motives, which I believe is what happened here to Martha. The phone rings. Moms of little children, there is diapers to change, there is babysitters, there is cleaning, there is laundry. I think we could all relate to the responsibilities. None of these things are bad in themselves, but we can get overwhelmed. Can't we get overwhelmed? Yeah. Um, I have my own schedules in the mornings. I try and get up early to spend my time with the Lord. Things that happen, I have a dog I have to walk. I like to exercise in the morning. There's a lot of, there's a whole list, and I'm sure at the sound of my voice, you have your list, right? 
But when I get overwhelmed, when I take my eyes off of Jesus and the reason for my life, I get anxious and I get overwhelmed, much like I was when I was preparing this word. <laughs> and we've all been there. Feelings of anxiety and stress may set in. And before you know it, you get angry. You're annoyed easily at someone. And your whole day is ruined. Anybody been there? What happened? You ask yourself. What happened? The struggle is real, and I think we could all relate to this in one way or the other. How can we maintain a merry heart, a heart of worship, the posture of our heart towards the Lord in a Martha world? How can we do that? We want to worship like Mary, but the Martha in us keeps bossing us around. Right? Martha is not a bad person. After all, she was very welcoming to Jesus and his disciples, and she wanted everything perfect. Let's face it, without Martha's around, nothing gets done. Amen. Right? I would like a few Martha's around my life. I'll tell you what I think happened to Martha, okay? These are my words, not the word of God. She was all excited to have Jesus come to her home. She doesn't just put a simple meal together, but decides to cook everything in the house. I've done that, people are coming over, and it's from soup to nuts. We have chicken, we have steak, we have sausage, you name it, we have it, okay? My husband always says, just make one thing. It just doesn't work. She prepares her home to perfection, and then so overwhelmed with everything that she's looking for her sister. She notices her sister just sitting at Jesus' feet and enjoying the company. She's enjoying the moment. She's making the most of the moment. A little resentment sets in, a little tinge in her heart. There she is again. She's so lazy. She, I, everything always falls on me. A little anger, and before you know it, she says to Jesus, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all this work by myself? Lord, don't you care that I'm hurting? Lord, don't you care I have so much to do? Lord, don't you care that I'm nervous? Where are you? Don't you care that I'm afraid? I pray, I come to you, I ask you, and I'm still dealing with these emotions. Lord, where are you? And she even gets to the point where she tells the Lord what to do. <laughs> she says, tell her to help me. How many of us sometimes try and be the Lord? We try and give answers. We try and be the answer. We try and be the Holy Spirit, right? I think that that's what happened to Mar Martha. But Mary was never meant to be like Martha. Right. Nor was Martha meant to be like Mary. Jesus didn't say you should be more like your sister. He didn't say that to her. He knew that Martha would never be like Mary, or Mary would never be like Martha. However, the two were faced with the same choice, yeah. to work or to worship. Yeah. That's right. And the decision was theirs. And Jesus said, Mary has chosen the better part. That's what he says. That implies that the better part was available to both Mary and Martha. The better part is available to you and I. Amen. It's available to you and I daily, yeah. moment by moment, choice by choice. Right. We're all different. We have different talents, different personalities, different seasons of life, young and old, married, single, right. whatever state of life we are in, yeah. we are faced with that choice every single day the better part. That's right. Jesus understands. Jesus understands our choices. You know why he understands? Because he is the one that has created us. And he has a plan for our lives. Wherever you're at, God hasn't forgotten you. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your children. We may have them for a little time when they're little. We hold them by the hand. But eventually they have to make their own choices. They need to choose the best part. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 14, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart, declares the Lord. That's in Jeremiah 29. He knows us. He has a plan for your life. And if we do not choose the better part, if we get caught up in all the activities of life, 
in a job, in our friends, in, in things that are not necessarily a bad thing. They needed to be done. Martha needed to serve her Lord the way that she knew how. Right? But she needed to choose the better part first. She needed to sit at his feet. Without sitting at the feet of Jesus, we will not know what his plan for our life is. We will go to the left and we'll go to the right. We'll make our own decisions, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. But if we sit at the feet of Jesus first, and I don't think that that, that means for us that we just stay at the feet of Jesus. Although a time with the Lord every single day of our lives is very important that we hear his voice, we listen for his voice. Yeah. We sit at his feet, we read his word, his word is life. That's very important, make time. If you don't have that time, then you're too busy. You're too busy. Make that time for the Lord. But it's a heart posture. Understanding that we don't belong to ourselves. We are His. We belong to Him. He is our Creator. And you know what? He loves us. He loves you. You may not feel loved at times. Maybe you, you don't feel loved because maybe you don't think He's answering you. But He sees you. He sees you. He has an answer and breakthrough is around the corner. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we're told, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared for us to do in advance. We are his workmanship, and he has prepared works for us. We're not going to know them out of ourselves unless we sit at his feet, unless we behold his beauty. And from that place, we have our being. We are who we are with his strength and from a place of intimacy with the Lord. It's not a bunch of do's and don'ts because that is overwhelming and fills us with anxiety. And I've got news for you. It's too much sometimes. Yeah. We don't have to say yes to everything. But from the intimacy that we share with our Lord, if we make our decisions, if we walk with him, we can't help but serve him. We can't help but be kind to others and be patient and be loving and not be easily offended when somebody slaps us on one cheek. What are we supposed to do? Give them the other. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't without the Holy Spirit. Amen? Uh, unless we choose the better part, we will get caught up in what we think we need to do instead of knowing our Savior and what He has already done for us. The invitation to choose the better part is all is for all of us. And I believe it's a heart posture, like I said before, that can only be ours when we have sat at Jesus' feet, heard his voice, and he poured our, his presence into us, into our hearts. And then from that overflow, from that overflow with his Holy Spirit empowering us, we move and have our being, we make decisions. Asking him for guidance, claiming his promises for us. Because we are his children, we will naturally want to be like Jesus. He is our example. We won't know him if we don't read his word, if we don't see what he did. Someone once wrote that Jesus went from prayer time to prayer time and did miracles on the way. Amen. Wouldn't that be awesome if that was our life? That continuously being in communion with our Lord Amen. and our Savior, wherever we go, whatever we do. You know, sometimes when we pray and we say amen, we leave the Lord there. We did our thing. We checked the mark. Okay, now I can go and do my thing. Many times we do that with church. Sunday morning, I have to go to church. Right? We come to church. Hello, God bless you. Everything is fine. We walk in with a smile. We leave with a smile. And on the inside, we're hurting. On the inside, we're hurting. God cares yes. about the inside, the heart. He cares about the things that we care about. question is, do we? Do we care about the things that he cares about? Do we have the compassion that only him, he, can pour into us? Mary may have been more mellow in personality than Martha was. And she was definitely more extravagant in her worship for her Lord. In John chapter 12, we see where she poured perfume on his feet in a room full of men. 
and she wiped his feet with her hair. And even then, she was criticized for her worship of the Lord, but she didn't care. She didn't care what people thought. She didn't care what her sister thought. She wanted to pour out all she had on her Lord, her Savior. Martha, on the other hand, service was her act of worship. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But this day, this day that we just read, Mary chose to let someone else do the serving and make the most of this opportunity to listen to Jesus' words. The better part, Jesus said. She didn't care. She didn't even care about her sister's disapproval. Sometimes the closest people to us keep us away from the devotion of our Lord. Mary heard the call of intimacy with the Lord to come, to listen, to sit a while. The living room intimacy that Mary enjoyed with Jesus will never come out of the busyness of Martha's kitchen. I'm going to say that again. The living room intimacy that Mary enjoyed with Jesus will never come out of the busyness of Martha's kitchen. Remember that. Remember that. Part of me is like Mary. I want to sit at the feet of Jesus, but part of me is also like Martha. So much to do and so little time. This is something else I have to do. Now I have to make more time, right? The world, the world's ways are not God's ways, as we're told in his word. The world applauds achievement. God desired, desires companionship. The world says, do more, be all that you can be. Our Heavenly Father whispers, be still and know that I am God. Amen. He isn't looking much for workers, but for sons and daughters. For sons and daughters, you are a son of the living God. You are a daughter of the living God. He's looking for that intimacy. Busyness by you are worried and upset about many things. And life can be overwhelming. Things upset us. Things worry us. Uh, sometimes we're plagued with fear. Sometimes we're even plagued with doubt. God, are you really there? Do you really love me, God? But Jesus said, only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen it, and it's the better part. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But he doesn't stop there. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Only when we go to him, when we sit at his feet, when we spend the time with him that he so desires for us to do. We all are different. We have different talents, different, different seasons of life. But the invitation is the same for all of us this morning, for every single one of us, moms, dads, young and old. Maybe like Martha, your life has been so hectic, you haven't even had time to think about the Lord. You have not sat at his feet in a long time, and you need to hear his voice. He invites you to choose the better part, to stop and sit at his feet for a while, or maybe like Mary, you worship, you spend time with him regularly, but you're still waiting for him to answer you. You still want to hear his voice. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just want to hear his voice. I want to see his beautiful face. And he tells you this morning, breakthrough is coming. Yeah. I Come see on. you. I hear you. Don't give up. Keep at it. I love you. I love you. See, our hope is not for the here and now. Our hope is something eternal that we have. He's got a great plan. He's working it all out. And the Bible says it's for our good, for all those that are called according to his purposes. He's working it all out. He's got your back. Amen. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. The enemy's a sneak, and he seeks to steal, kill, and destroy for us. He's like a roaring lion seeking whomever he may devour. May means he needs permission. He doesn't have any power over us. The only power he has is the one that we give him. That's right. We belong to the Lord. Yes. We are his. Yes. Remember that. Remember that. 
His promises are for us. Yes. We are engraved in the palms of his hands. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Do you believe that? Because the truth of the matter, if you're like me, I go after all these things many times. <laughs> and the Lord calls me back. Yeah. He calls me back. And if I'm not in a rush, I listen. Sometimes I'm in a rush and I'm not listening. I do things my way. But God is so merciful and so wonderful. He still calls me by name. Yeah. He's calling each one of you by name. Will you answer? Will you say yes, Lord? Will you stand on his word and his promises? His promises. You know, just last night when um, I prepared for, for the message today, I was finishing everything up. And, of course, if anybody knows me, when I get nervous, I don't speak much. And I said, no. I said, that's not happening tonight, Lord. It's not happening. The word of God says that not to be anxious for anything, but in everything, through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And His peace shall guard your heart and your mind. And I said, and that promise, Lord, is for me. And I take it, and I ask you, God, for your anointing. I ask you, God, to fill me with your spirit. I ask you, God, to take this anxiety from me. I want to sleep tonight. And I hold on to your promise of your peace that will guard my heart and my mind. And if I pray that once, I'll pray it twice, I'll pray it three times, and you know what? I fell asleep. And I'm so thankful, I can't say I didn't wake up with a knot in my stomach. But again, again, I held on to the promise of the Lord. Because he's calling us, he was calling me by name. He says, I've given you a word. I want you to bring it. I want my people to choose the better part, my children to choose the better part, to sit at my feet, not to be caught up in the doings and the responsibilities of life, but to come to me. They're burdened. We're burdened. He wants us to go to him. He doesn't want us to carry our own burdens. He has a purpose for you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you've been created by a loving God? A God who loves us so much that he knew we needed a Savior. We needed a Savior to be with him forever. Forever. That's why Jesus came. He came to show us how to live, to die on the cross for our sins, to cover us with his blood. And he's not in the tomb anymore. Sometimes we serve him like he's still in the tomb. He came out of that tomb and he's sitting sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. That's what the Word says. He is alive and well, and He's interested in you. He loves you. Don't get caught up in the situations of life. We do see in Martha, there's another account, um, that she again was serving the Lord. And this time we don't see any anxiety. We also see Martha when she's the first one that runs out to the Lord when he goes to, to um, raise Lazarus from the dead. She was there before Mary went. So we see that she learned. Will we learn? Will we hear the voice of the Lord say to us, Come, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Or maybe, maybe, you have never known Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've never experienced this intimacy. You've heard about him. You love him. You know him. You, you classify yourself as a Christian. But you've never felt his presence in your heart. You've never given your life to him. He invites you this morning. He invites you. Salvation is a gift. A gift that must be received. He will not force himself on you. I remember when my heart was far from the Lord on my way to maybe my sister's house on, on a holiday, I would stop at a church, and it used to be packed. And so even from the outside, I would stop because I just wanted to, you know, it was Easter, it was Christmas, you know. My heart was far from God. I was doing my own thing, whatever I thought was, was good, but God never gave up on me. He kept calling me by name. He knew exactly where my heart was. And eventually, he grabbed a hold of my heart. I gave it to him. I received his gift. So it's a gift that we must receive and say yes to him. In John 14, 6, it says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. Amen. 
So this invitation is for all of us today to sit at the feet of Jesus, to come to him and to say, yes, Lord, I want to choose this moment, the better part. I know we have plans, who's going out to dinner, who's going home, we all have plans, but don't uh, let this moment go to sit at the feet of Jesus, even for a moment, even for a moment, choose the better part this morning and worship him. Let's all stand. Let's all stand just for a few minutes. If you want to come up front for prayer, come up. You can stay where you are. Feel free. But just take a moment to choose the better part. To just stand or sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his voice tell him, Lord, I want intimacy with you. Lord, I want to see your beauty. I don't want this to just be another church service. I don't want this to just be another thing that I do or that I did to please somebody else. Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, come into my heart. That needs to be a prayer that you pray with all your heart. It's not just words. It's a prayer that you can say, Lord, I don't understand. I've heard this. I don't get it. But Lord, let me hear your voice calling me by name. Open my heart, Lord. Sometimes our heart is hardened and overwhelmed like Martha's was. God, soften my heart. God, I give you my burdens. I give you the things that cause anxiety in my life. I give you my children, moms. The best place that you can bring your kids is to the cross. And not just by words, but by your life's example. Dads, you too. <laughs> I know it's Mother's Day, but dads, you have you are the high priest of your home. Your children are watching you. They're watching you more than they're listening to what you're saying. Sometimes what people say is blah, 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 blah. But your actions, your words, your choices, the way you treat their mother, mothers, the way you treat their fathers, the children are watching. The people that you interact with every day of your life, they're watching. They're watching if you truly believe what it is that you're preaching it is that you're saying you serve. They're watching when you're anxious and overwhelmed what you're doing with that. These are emotions that we all deal with at times. What we need to do is go sit at the feet of Jesus. So I invite you this morning, not I, but the Lord invites us this morning to just take a moment and sit at his feet. The more I seek you, Your heart be 
It's over with. 